you guys um, welcome back to my channel um, this video is gonna be about oh. hey guys um, why do I keep saying hey guys all the time like stop all right hello everybody welcome back to my channel um, this episode is gonna be a Q&A um, based off of the two videos that I posted about my breakup with the, you know, the lying, stealing, cheating, fuckface ex-fiance that I had. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that I get to everything that you guys um, have asked. There's so many questions, but I picked basically ones that would kind of encompass everything. And yeah, you guys are gonna enjoy it because it's, it's always a great time, even when it's my life being blown up. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, but I did order some Stella's. They're on the way, so I'm going to be feeling a little bit better in a while. So, and yes, I'm too lazy to go walk down the street and go get them. I ordered them to the house. Yikes. Day in the life. Okay. Ew. And I do want to say this before I get started. If you have not watched the first two episodes on my channel, you're not going to understand any of the shit that's going on. So I highly advise you to do that. They're kind of long, but I, I've been told that they're pretty entertaining. So just go ahead and do it. You can laugh at my pain or cry at it, whatever you wish, whatever's you wish. Um, shit, I had something else to say. I think I'm just waiting for my Stella. I'm thirsty. And I'm so tired, I have not been able to sleep at all the past couple days. Like, it's been kind of brutal for me, but I do want to go ahead and get all this out here for you guys because I know you guys have a lot of questions, and um, I've made you guys wait long enough. You're really patient with me. Okay, probably the most asked question um, has been, why am I speaking so slow? Like, I am so tired mentally right now. Like, get your fucking words out. So annoying. All right. Okay, so like the babe, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm about to give up right when I started. Yo, <laughs> where's my Stella? I believe in me. You got this shit, girl. <sighs> this almost sucks. I don't want to talk about this shit. I decided I probably wasn't like speaking very well because I um, needed my chapstick. Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? But I'm starting over and I'm going to do a really good job this time. Hopefully. Okay, so the first question that everyone was asking like a bajillion times, that's what I was trying to get out, um, is when did you reach out to Casey? So funny because, well, it's not even funny at all, but that time of when Evan left on the 27th, um, December 27th through January 1st when I had to leave my apartment, I really like don't remember exact time periods. So I actually had to ask my mom um, and she was like, um, I texted her, I believe it was uh, two or three days after because I didn't tell anyone for two days that he had left me because I was just hoping that he would come back and begging and pleading and sending him a bajillion, like I can't even tell you how many text messages and calls and voicemails and videos of me like crying and like just begging him to come home like it's so blah, blah, blah. but this is facts and I just want to be very transparent um I did that for two days straight I sat oh my gosh I literally sat in my windowsill of my living room just like staring out the window just hoping that he was gonna like I would see him drive by in that fucking rental car that I didn't even know about Oh, and this is funny. He used my car to go to the rental car place to go like reserve the car the day before. And he told me he was getting my car cleaned because we were about to sell it. 
and he took forever and I was like why is it taking so long to go get the car clean and then it looked like shit so I had to re-clean the car mm. but he helped me with it which and I was like thank you so much and you're doing such a good job oh, this, oh it's like so crazy to think about um okay so I think it was like probably like the 29th or something um I could probably look it up but I mean basically a few days after I texted her because my mom told me that I should because she was like I think that this is like an ongoing thing with him. I think this is, you know, a pattern. And so I texted Casey. Um, and at first I think that she was like, obviously she should have been like very like weary of me, but it was kind of like one of those things, like she was, she knew what I was going through. And um, when I texted her, she was really, I mean, standoffish as she should have been, but she was, Definitely, she was expecting this. She knew it was gonna happen. She just didn't know it was gonna happen this quick. Um, and basically she just told me a lot of things that like, um, this is, it is a pattern for him and he's gonna do this. He does this to everyone. And um, he's a user. He uses you dry and then leaves you. That's what he does. So um, she was really, really nice to me still is really nice to me. We talk like all the time about this, that, and the third. Ew, I hate that I just said that. Um, did Casey go through the same stuff as me? Yes, Casey did go through a lot of the same stuff as me. Obviously, she was doing that for 10 years. So, I mean, hers is in some ways way more severe, in some ways not, because Evan couldn't lie to her about certain things because they grew up together. So he couldn't lie about money to her because she knew his family. She knew that they weren't rich. She knew like all, she knew everything. So um, when she found out all the lies that he told me about all that kind of stuff, she was just like dumbfounded, but also was like, damn, he's just getting better at what he does and he's doing his research. And that's exactly what he, I mean, he's gonna keep getting better at it. And so I honestly just wanna help the next victim because there's gonna be, one, two, three. I mean, there's gonna be some for the rest of his life. It's gonna be insane. But um, I can do my part. Oh my God. <laughs> my Stellas are here. Oh. Um, I'll come back on whenever I get my stuff. Uh, I, I didn't even answer the question, but sorry, I'll be back. <laughs> Cheers. I guess you're supposed to cheers first and then drink, but whatever. I'm parched. Mm -hmm. So I was saying what Oh, about Casey. She was like really gracious to me because I mean, obviously, naturally, she should have hated me because first of all, the show, and I don't want to get into that, even though I probably should about how the singles in season one they were not told how the show was actually gonna be. So uh, I'll get into that at a different time. But <clears throat> I believed everything Evan told me about her because he's good at taking one truth and making these elaborate lies about them. And so I was believing everything that he said, like anything that he told me about her, I believed because I didn't have a reason not to believe him. And so I thought she was the freaking devil. And I told her that immediately and She's like, no, I figured that he did that because he has always done that to me. Um, and he did he did it to me too. So we bonded on that. We bonded on so many different things. She knows him more than anyone in the world because she lived with him for 10 years. Um, I thought I knew him, but I knew the fake person. Um, and then once I knew the, the real one, you know, the fucked up one, I don't even talk to you now. I still thought that I knew him, his heart, and his heart's not good. He's not a good person. And so that's one of the hardest things to accept is that not only did you get conned, but there's no fixing it. There's nothing you can do because he's just a bad person. But um, no, Casey was great. It's very funny because Evan has a type. And when I say type, obviously he doesn't have a type looks wise because me and Casey couldn't be further from 
each other looks wise completely opposites but personality wise and I mean our personalities are uh, similar in some ways he picks girls that are very confident yep <clears throat> He picks confident girls that he can also tell are sensitive and are empathetic to people. Mm. Because, oh my god, I can't even, like, I, I keep doing this. I hate talking about all this shit. I just fucking hate talking about this. But he knows who to choose. Um, he's a great con man. And I believe that Evan chose me immediately off the bat once he found out that I disliked him. I can't even say that because I think that he chose me immediately on the first night when we introduced ourselves to people. I think that he had his victims ready and I think that I was the main one because of my job. Um, all of the other girls, you know, like I said, entrepreneur and like esthetician and flight attendant and stuff like that. And I always said, real, I'm a real estate agent. And when I described to him that I, you know, live in a two bedroom, two bath by myself and, you know, I'm very comfortable in DC and like I'm established there and all this kind of stuff. I think that that was him being like, oh, shit, she's the one I'm going to choose. And now looking back on it, it's like, ugh. Like, I had no idea, obviously. Because I hated him at first. <laughs> but I think that he molded his personality to match mine once he found out a little bit more about me. Because <laughs> he needed someone to take care of him. Because Casey was done doing it. Okay, next question is... Um... Why did you still move out to LA after he left you like that? Um, this one's really hard to explain um, because unless you've been in a situation like this with a an abusive partner, um, it doesn't make sense. Like it just, it literally does not make sense. Um, I should have been done right then and there when he left me like that and blamed me and told me that I'm the one that needs to change and that, you know, like I knew it was bullshit that he was going there to work because he could have worked there while I was there. And um, and I knew this and I kept trying to explain that to him and he just would not take that. He's like, no, I feel so low when I'm around you because you think I'm worthless. So I'm gonna make some money here with Quinn and then I'll be able to have you come out and we can get our own place instead of having to live at Quinn's since you don't want to. And I'm like, I will live at Quinn's, like that's fine. I wanna be together, like what the fuck? You can't just like leave me like this. Especially like when we still have some of the house to pack up and I don't wanna drive by myself. Like what do you, like what the fuck? And so then he's like, no, you can just stay with some friends for uh, like a week or two. And I'm like, are you kidding me, a week or two? And then it ended up being three weeks and then it ended up being a month like trust me like now thinking back on it it's like so sad too because like I was just devastated and crazy and like what the fuck is going on he had me strung along the entire time and I had no idea why everything was my fault so I'm apologizing telling him I'll be nicer and like I never thought that he was worthless and blah blah, blah and like oh my god all of this bullshit but so I ended up going to LA because First of all, I had no home. I had just got rid of my house because me and Evan were moving. Um, cause, and he left me three days before. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, really a day before and I just got it extended for two more days. <laughs> this makes me so angry to talk about. Like, oh my God. So wait, what was I saying? Why did I go? I also made an excuse in my head because I've always wanted to move out to LA. I almost moved out to LA three years ago and I chickened out at the last minute. So I was like, you know what? First of all, I'm a fucking ride or die. If I love you and I'm, it's very hard. I will say this too. If I'm talking to you, chances are I'm probably not only talking to you. And whatever, I'm saying that. But if I'm with you, I'm with you. 
and especially if I'm fucking engaged to you, I'm, I am you and only you, nothing else. Like, you know, like I said, I thought I was going to be engaged once and once only, and I was going to do anything for him, help him. I knew he was fucked up, like with so many things. I knew he was a liar. Like I knew he was a gaslighter. I knew all these, like, I mean, all, like all the shit. And I was like, well, we can just like work on it because like, you know, I'm going to be there for him. And so I, I was going to do anything to save it. I'm also very stubborn. Like, yo, I'm going to be able to fix this. That's how I felt. That's how I always feel about shit. And so when I don't have the ability to, to do that, it it's really hard for me. It's really hard for me to give up um, if I'm invested. And obviously I was invested in this. It was my life. So that's why I went to L.A. I thought that I would come there and like that we'd like go to therapy and like do better but at that point I was telling him I'm gonna come there and I'm gonna be a better person to you because it was all my fault you know um, anything <laughs> Ooh, it's so really gross anything to make him stop punishing me because that's what he was doing is punishing me um, for nothing, like literally for nothing. It's so. Mm. Yes. So that's why I went to LA. It's because I was being a dumbass bitch. Okay, so honestly, I just tried to answer one of the questions and it was. Ugh. I hate that I'm like fucking still. How did you find out about the random girl and why are you protecting her identity? And then what did you do after you found out and where did you go? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm gonna save those for a little bit later because I'm like fucking emotional right now. I think I'm just tired. Like, I don't know. I'm just like so drained. So I'm gonna like go to like some other good ones. Um, good questions. Let's see. Let's see. Ugh. Who paid for the ring? The network paid for the ring. Evan told me he paid for it in full at first. And I was pissed because I was like, why would you do that when you owe me so much money? Like, why would you spend $50,000 on a ring when I'm paying double for everything right now? Like, why don't, like, don't do that. I was like, you could have given me a ring pop. I literally said that. And he's like, so you don't like your ring? And I was like, no, I love my ring. I just don't need a ring like this. Like, I don't need this. Literally, you could have bought me something from like Kohl's or something, like a normal freaking ring. It's like what it means. It's not supposed to be like some like extravagant thing, especially when we're like fucking poor. Like, why do I have a Tiffany's ring? That's like what we argued about. And he's like, baby deserves the best. And I was like, ew, like, don't ever say that to me. And then he's like, see, like, whatever. I mean, there were a lot of things that we would argue over just because he would act pretentious and I hate that. Okay. Oh, but yeah, so he told me that he bought the whole, like he bought it by himself and then he said that he split it 25,000, 25,000 with the network because they made me sign something. And I was like, why would they make me sign something if you bought the whole thing? He's like, well, I split it. And I was like, okay, why don't you just tell me that? And I was like, still $25,000 spending on a ring is like a lot. Like, and that's really dumb for you to do that. <clears throat> I'm so gross. Maybe that's why he left me. Whatever. Um, so yeah, got that one out of the way. Um, God damn, all these are fucking the same. Um, does he have any remorse? No. He's incapable of remorse. He has remorse if it affects him. So if like, you know, like these two videos before that have come out, like because they've affected him. He has remorse. It's not even remorse. No, he blames. He feels bad for himself and that's it. No one else. No one else matters. Um, everyone wants you to write a book. Uh -huh. I mean, you never know these days. Like, it'd be so easy to fill up pages. There's so much. I haven't even started with the lies. I think I'm gonna do a separate video because I want like one of the videos to just be freaking funny and it's gonna be hilarious because it's it's so funny. I might even do it tonight if I'm feeling 
crazy and like on a roll, I might just start telling the lies. Maybe that'll make me feel better. Maybe I should do that video because I'm so like sensitive right now. Maybe that'll make me laugh. Um, does it bother you that he still has all of your pictures up? Yes. Like what the hell are you doing? Why? I like, I'm confused. I honestly believe that he has all of our pictures up because if he deletes them all, then he has like four pictures and they're all like douchebag pictures of him like, like, Ugh. whenever um, we first got together and he came to live with me, the first thing that I did was told him that he had to purge his Instagram because it was so excruciating to look at because it was just this all the time. And like the stupid like face, it was like so, it was like just douchebag central. Um, did Evan say anything to you about the videos? Yes, he did. Um, can't believe that you could do this to us. To us? Like what? I can't believe that you could do all the shit that you've done. Are you kidding me? And now you're going to try and like turn this on me and be like, oh, I can't believe you did this. No, you did this. You did this. Like he, he, honest to God, cannot comprehend that. Because in his brain, the world does everything to him and he does nothing wrong to anyone else. That's the hardest thing for me to um, understand is it, his brain works so different than mine. Um, any kind of conflict that I'm in, any, even if I'm not in the conflict, if I'm just like a bystander, like looking at like, I always look at every side of the situation and I always wonder like well maybe this person felt this way I wonder why this person felt this way you know like that's how that's how relationships work that's how people work in general um, you have to look at both sides of everything he's incapable he can only see his side yeah okay What did your family think of Evan? My family loved Evan because I loved Evan. Same with my friends. Um, once all this shit happened, so many of my friends came out of the woodwork and told me stories and told me things that they didn't tell me because they loved me. And it's so weird because I noticed that my friends, my group of guy friends especially, they kind of stopped inviting me to do things. Um, maybe after like five or six times of hanging out with Evan and I was, and I would get upset. I'd be like, why are they not inviting us? Like, what the fuck? And then finally afterwards, they're like, we just honestly didn't like him. And it was nothing against you, but we knew you loved him, but like, we would rather him not be there. And then it all made sense, you know, like he's, he's tough to be around after a while. Like he, he's arrogant. He's already the biggest person in the room but he needs to be the biggest person in the room as well. Um, he's not nice to people. He, he bullies people, he picks on people. And, and I don't understand that. I'll never understand that. Um, and he's always trying to one-up everybody. And he'll lie to do that. It's like insane. Um, but yeah, my family did like him. My mother um, honestly was fooled by him completely for a while. But then once Evan's mom called my mom and they had that talk, she was not at all, obviously. And after that, like, even after that, both my parents, oh, oh my God. One time we were at dinner and he told my parents to stop helping me pay my student loans because he was going to pay for them all, knowing that he couldn't. What the fuck? Like, that's what I don't get. Why make lies that people can like catch up with like are you kidding me so yeah he makes that lie and then um he did that like maybe a month before his mom called so you know it hadn't come time for my student loans to be paid again um i didn't even know this i mean i i knew that he had told me that he would pay my student loans and i was like oh like okay like whatever like cool um because i'm very open i was oh i'm always very open about any like everything like let's be honest to each other 
Like when he would always brag about money, I'd be like, oh cool, well I've got student loans on my ass, good for you. Like, but um, but he's the kind of guy that's like, ah, student loans? Oh my God, what did he say? He was like, that's literally one month of um, my mansion in LA, their rent. That's one month, it's nothing. Okay. Mind you, my student loans were at like 30,000, 40,000 or something like that at the time. And I was like, wait, what kind of mansion are you in? Oh my God, these lies. Okay, I'm definitely tonight, I think I'm definitely gonna make the lie video because they're so funny and they're gonna make me laugh. And I already like wrote out, like a long time, in January, I wrote out like a list of all his lies and Casey did too. And then so, does it, so did his other ex-girlfriend, Austin, we all did it. And there are so fucking many, it's not even funny. And they're so bizarre and hilarious like mm. all right anyways I think that I got off track but um oh yeah basically my mother yeah I mean they loved him as his as their own they took him in as their own literally this fucking breaks my heart is like when we were on temptation island they didn't show this Evan was like you know talking about how he has to be the man of the family and like how he has to take care of everyone and like his whole family just uses him and abuses him and all of his money that he makes from all of the restaurants and stuff goes straight to his mom and his brothers and his grandma and Casey because they're all vultures. And I was sitting there, I remember exactly where we were. We were on our final date on like the, um, whatever that sailboat. And I was like, I understand like doing things for other people. And I, I literally, it makes me like you so much more that you're so giving but you have to have boundaries with people too. I should have been talking to my goddamn self, but I was like, you have to have boundaries too. You can't, you know, give everything to those people if they're not doing anything. If your brothers have never had a job, make them get a job. It's not that hard, you know, just to contribute a little bit. Um, tell your grandma that she needs to stop going on $30,000 vacations and stuff like that. Like, that's, that's crazy to me. And he was like, yeah, but like, ever since my dad died, I've gotta be the man. I'm the man. I don't have a dad. Like. And it was so dramatic and I was crying with him. And I remember being like, well, I've got like the best dad in the world. And like, I'll share my dad with you. And like, it was like the like most like crazy and like emotional like night and time. And it was, he was faking it all. And I was dead ass serious. And guess what, guess what? Right when we fucking got to DC, the first day we got to DC, we went to happy hour with my family. And my dad took him in like nothing. Like my dad trusted me with my decision in a man. Cause I've, I've never brought home a bad guy. And then the one time I do, it's literally the devil. It's literally the spawn of Satan. I'm dead. <laughs> but yeah, my dad completely took him in and was like, hey, if you love him, I love him. And he hugged him and everything. And then they'd invite us over all the time because we were supposed to be like um, in hiding. We would hang out with my parents every, like every other day, like becoming close with them. And Evan would lie to them about the craziest shit. So after August, my dad, I could tell, didn't like Evan, but he would do his best. Like Evan didn't know that my dad didn't like him. Evan knew, I think, that my mom was weary of him because if he said something, she would ask him questions. And he'd all whenever we'd leave, he'd be like, she asked so many fucking questions. And I was like, she's a mom, she's supposed to. She wasn't asking enough questions before, obviously. But anyways, that was a really long answer. Um, all these other ones, honestly, I don't want to answer at this time. Because they're all basically um, of the same nature, but um, just give me, I'm gonna drink like three of these Stella's and maybe like watch a murder mystery real quick or like read some of the lies that I've had written down because they're funny. Um, I just don't wanna get emotional because I'm sick of being like that. So yeah, but thank you for tuning in for the second. Um, I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm back and it's been like, I think like four hours and all I've been doing is like, um, laying on the bed and watching murder mysteries and I put 
these acrylic nails on five of my fingers and then I haven't done this hand at all. Well, and I haven't even finished this, it looks like shit. But anyways, no one really cares about that. So um, I didn't wanna answer the hard questions, but here they are. Um, basically, everyone's asking the same thing. How, do, how did I find out about um, the random girl? Um, why am I protecting the random girl by not exposing who she is? Um, why didn't I beat her ass? Why didn't I beat his ass? Like they're all basically like similar, but basically it's like everyone wants to know what happened after I'm in the car for eight hours waiting. Okay, so here I go. <laughs> and I'm not gonna cry cause I'm just gonna be mad. Okay. Damn, and I don't have, I literally had one beer. I didn't even finish that one beer. I'm just so tired. I wanted to like get into this and like, you know, be like fun, but I, I'm I'm just really exhausted, but I'm gonna explain this right now. Okay, I just can do it. So, I am I end up sleeping in the car for eight hours after I'd already been in the car for fucking 40, whatever, some hours driving to his ass. Um, I wake up to him knocking on my car door window and he's crying and he's like, oh my God, baby, like, why didn't you just come inside? I left the, um, patio door open for you. And I was like, I didn't know that. I wouldn't have known to, to come in that way. Like you knew I was going to be there like very soon in like 30 minutes, whatever I said. And you didn't like, what the fuck happened? You couldn't have slept for eight hours in a row. And this was another thing. His hair was wet. Shouldn't be a big deal, right? Unless you just suddenly wake up out of your eight hour slumber and realize that your fiance who just drove across the fucking country is outside waiting for you. You don't fucking shower first. The first thing that you do is hop your ass outside and run. And the fact that he had time to shower after knowing that I'm out there, it made me feel weird. And I didn't say that to him. It was just something that I, I noticed. I was like, and he's like, what's wrong with you? Cause I was being very quiet, but it's cause I was thinking, I was like, how could he have slept that long through that? Like, you know, I've lived with this person for, you know, a year and a half. He doesn't sleep that hard. And especially if he knew I was coming and we hadn't seen each other in a month, you know? So I'm being weird and he's like, what, what do you think that I did? You think that I really would have someone over? You think I'm that stupid to do that? The one day that you're coming in town, really Morgan? And I'm like, yeah, you're right, you're right. That's fucking stupid. I wouldn't, yeah, you're right. And he's like making me feel like I'm an idiot about it for even thinking that. But to me, it just did not make sense. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna let that go because that really is like, I know he's stupid, but he's not that stupid. <laughs> so anyways, um, I stay with him for like five days after that. And mind you, Ki um, Quinn and um, his girlfriend, one of his girlfriends, whatever, Lauren is out, they're out of town, I think, I can't remember where. And um, so it's just us and Ghosty. Um, we do all this stuff. He takes me to USC, takes me around, shows me like where his classes were and all this kind of whatever. But I'm still being weird because first of all, I'm pissed off at him for everything that's happened. So we talked about that, blah, blah, blah. He like made me try to make me feel guilty for everything. Whatever, that part doesn't even really matter because this part's so much crazier. Um, so we get, I think, I can't remember. It was like the last day that I was, um, I hate this part. So we're smoking at his house um, and he has like a bong and I don't really like smoke that much. And so like, I got like super high to where like, I was like forgetting what I was saying, like halfway through it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and um, I just, I remember sometimes if you smoke, some people like they get like paranoid and thank god i did because um evan was like out in the living room and i went to the bathroom and he had left his phone in the no he had left his second phone that same phone the one my phone he brought that with him first of all so he stole my freaking phone 
and brought it with him. Dumb move. Second dumb move, leave the phone in the bathroom, your second phone, and don't change the password. So it's the same thing that it was. So I see it on the counter and I decide to check it. And I immediately, I immediately go to Quinn's texts because Quinn's always the one that he's talking to about shit that um, gets him in trouble. Because Quinn, he, whatever. Quinn is always the one encouraging him to do something. So anyway, but it's, I mean, it's not Quinn's fault, it's Evan's fault. He has his own brain. Um, so I go through the text messages and I go back to the week before because I wanted to know what happened that day. And um, the text message says, yo dude, I finally did it. And Quinn's response was like, no fucking way, you finally fucked someone, who was it? And he goes, it's this girl blank she's kind of ugly but she has a nice body I had to borrow some of your dick pills to do it but I finally did it so just imagine me as his fiance and we had just spent like five days together after not seeing each other he made me feel like a fucking idiot for even questioning him for having wet hair and like whatever even though I didn't even mention the wet hair but for not waking up for eight hours when he knew I was about to be there. Come to find out, as I was pulling up, he had invited this girl over as well and took a dick pill, which first of all, if you've got to take a dick pill to have sex with someone, when you've never had to do that before, like that was his first time taking a dick pill, oh, he also went on and on and on about how crazy the dick pill was and like, yeah, whatever. If you have to do that, that means that he knew that it was fucked up what he was doing and he knew he wouldn't be able to follow through with it without a dick pill. So just imagine me like reading this and then also I'm like high. So I'm like forgetting like what I'm reading halfway through and then I, then it's like I stopped being high because I was like, what the actual like and then your heart. Um, I can't I would never wish this on my worst enemy that feeling after just leaving and then also my family doesn't even know that I'm in LA they think that I'm in Newport Beach with Tara because they know Evan's scum so I don't say anything to Evan right away the next day oh so another thing is so he mentioned the girl's name obviously and so then I go through his phone that same phone type in that girl's name Take a screenshot of it with my phone of her number. Text her the next day. Mm, this is like fucked up too. Text her the next day and ask her. And she lies and says she would never like be with someone who had a fiance and blah, blah, blah. And like um, something must be wrong with you if you're having to go through his phone to like um, talk to me and she's being a real bitch and so you know I'm a girl so I'm thinking of like what's gonna make her tell me the truth so I took that screenshot of Evan saying she's ugly but has a nice body and I sent it to her floodgates open she tells me everything she starts sending me screenshots she literally tells me everything he had been pursuing her for about uh, two weeks they knew each other in high school. Like, um, basically he was doing exactly what Casey told me he would do. She said that like, once he gets to LA, he's gonna try and find all of his old like people that he liked or like flings. And he's gonna go try and like hook up with them. And that's what he did. And I get, you know, he succeeded, but um, it backfired on him because I'm a cool ass bitch. And it turns out that that girl was actually really cool. I also did tell her that it's really fucked up that um, a fiance would ask you if you hooked up with her man and you lied fucking weird but she told me Evan had told her that we are not engaged in that I'm delusional and I'm a psychopath like so many crazy like just making it like Evan 
And I said, was he wearing his ring? And she said, no. And I was like, that's so funny because when he came out with wet hair, he had a ring on. She was like, no, I left at um, 5.30 in the morning. And I was like, he literally came out at like 5.43 to come get me. So I find out everything. I ask her where they were in the house, like when they were having sex, all this kind of stuff. They were like, she was like, we went into his bedroom. And I also like that night I saw his bedroom like, wow, God, that's so stupid of me. My brain, I don't know how to explain where my brain was at, but it was, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, he's just really high and fell asleep or like something like that. I don't know how. I haven't told this to anybody, not even like my friends. So this is like gonna be, I mean, I'm gonna have a lot of friends mad at me too. They already kind of know the story, but this is like really um, fucked up, especially in a little bit um, when I tell everything else. Um, I'm gonna have people mad at me, but I don't care. Like, I take pride in being a very real person. I've been trying to, I'm also very private usually, but I know that this can help people because um, everyone keeps saying that I'm like so strong and like good for you for leaving him. And it's like, you know, like that's not how it went. I was doing anything I could to save my um, marriage was supposed to be anything. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt always, and I always felt bad for him, always. Okay, so anyways, so this girl starts telling me fucking everything that he's saying about me, about her. Um, so basically they hook up, and then, you know, I'm there the next, or that exact, uh, 10 minutes later, I'm still there, I was there the whole time. So he's having sex with her, literally, while I'm not even 10 feet away, outside of the window, in my car sleeping freezing um so that's sick and then he has the audacity to come out crying and then yell at me for even thinking anything so um did I beat her ass no would I beat her ass no honestly I was grateful after the fact that she told me the truth but she was like damn he's a fucking psychopath and then like basically like right after they hooked up, he like stopped talking to her and it's because I was there the whole week, but he didn't tell her that. He's just, he's, he's, I honestly believe that he wanted me to come through the window because he has some obsession with windows. And I'm not trying to make these connections. Like I'm not saying these are the facts with how he's thinking, but he also told me a really weird lie that Casey and this and his other ex Austin in college got in a huge fight, a fist fight in his yard in college because um, he was having sex with Casey and Austin came through the window and saw them. And so they started having a fight. I asked Casey about that and she's like, I've never even met Austin before. That's such a fucking lie. And I'm like, what's his obsession with windows? But if you think about it, his dad, that's exactly how his dad got murdered, was um, through a window while getting caught cheating. He wanted me to come through that window, and that's like so fucking sick. So after that, uh, you guys asked if I, if I beat up Evan too. Yeah, I mean, oh, I don't know if I want to get into this. I'm not going to get into that. Um, so after that, I confront him once I have my facts straight. He immediately starts crying. I flip the fuck out on him, as I should have. Uh, Quinn's there, and so it's the first, I mean, that's the first time he's seeing me. And so he thinks I'm a psycho, and he kicks me out of the house. Because he does <laughs> it's so, and then Evan's just going, she's crazy, she's crazy. It's like, no, you piece of shit. I just found out that my fiance was fucking a girl while I was um, 10 feet away. Um, what more do I need to say about this? I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Oh, where did I go after that? I went to Newport where I was supposed to go. 
So I went to go stay with my best friend Tara in Newport for a little bit after that. And I still kept in contact with him, mostly like screaming and stuff like that. But um, he needs his fucking ass beat, like to be honest. I would never do that to my, to anybody, especially someone that I loved. Nobody, I would, I would never do that to someone. It's like so fucked, it's beyond fucked up. Oh, and then he blamed me. That's my fault that I did that because I made, because I hate him. You know why I fucking did it? It's because you fucking hate me. I don't even fucking like her. I had to take dick pills to fucking have sex with her. I did it because you hate me. What? Like, at least get more, cre you're very creative. Like, at least get more creative with that. Like, come on, I didn't do shit, except drive across the country for you. So then after that, like, long story short, I really did not, we, we did not see each other at all. Um, we would talk still and uh, like we would like but not talking we would just argue and like not be good like it was not good it was just him blaming me for why he is the way he is and that's basically about it until um, I mean then it then towards like May and stuff he, he would start sending me like videos of him crying on the floor and blah 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 trying to make me feel bad for him and I was like good like you deserve that um, but then in June I like gave in and started to kind of talk to him again. So that's where we're at now. Fuck, I don't want to talk about this. I can't do this right now. I'm not going to.